my channel, we're gonna start off by cutting off the sleeves of the shirt. Then we're gonna turn the shirt inside out and then we're gonna pin the neckline. So you just put it as high as you want it at the front and you pin the neck and then we're gonna continue on by pinning the side seams to fit the body. This Forever 21 shirt was cheap. It was like $3.20 on sale and it's the worst shirt ever because you can see all of my nipples, you know, and that's not cool for like, for like children. Nope, it's not cool at all. Anyways, so don't get this. I'm going to put a link in the description box for the best type of shirts to get. You can get them from Amazon. Not these ones. Don't get these ones. Nope, nope, not Forever 21 ones. And I'm keeping this a bit loose. Only because the Forever 21 shirt actually um, stretched out while I was making it. Sucks to be me. So at this point right now, I'm just going to mark the top of the side seam. And then I'm going to mark how high I want the side armhole to be. Um, I generally put the top of the side seam like at nipple length. Not nipple length, nipple height. And then I just like, you know, yeah. Okay, it's just pretty much self-explanatory. So then I just marked that with a chalk pen and I then I also marked the side seams with a chalk pen just to like a nice line going down in case any pins dropped out. Now we're going to take it off and then we're going to just gonna do a rough cut going up the side seam of the shirt. We're not doing it close to the marks that we made because you don't want to mess it up. So just do a nice little cut and then we're going to take out the pins and then separate the front from the back. Now that we have it like this, we are going to follow the curve of the neckline and do like a three quarters, a half of an inch to three, three quarter away from the neckline seam. And just draw like a line as you can see me doing here. And then we're going to cut the shoulder seam to that drawing. And then we're going to cut the drawing line and go all the way around and cut the other shoulder seam. So now that the front is separated from the back, we are going to redraw the side seam using our French curve and our rulers. Invincible. Now fold it in half after you redrawn the side seams and the neckline and then you are going to add 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance or how much ever seam allowance you want to add but I added 3 eighths of an inch to mine. I pinned it down to make sure that the under layer didn't move and then I cut it out. So we're finished with the front for now, we're going to get the back, we're just going to fold it in half and make sure it's nice and smooth and then we're going to get the front which is also folded in half and we're going to put it over the back, make sure the folds are aligned and then we're just going to trace out the side seam. You don't have to add seam allowance to this part because we already added the seam allowance to the front. So just trace out the side seam, mark the top part and then we're going to draw a straight line going across the top as you can see here. Add 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance at the top and cut out. Right here where you see like the line flashing, 
I'm showing you to cut straight up and not an angle like I did. Cut like like vertically and not diagonally when you get there because um, when you actually go to try it on, it's going to have like a slight gap. So drawing, like making sure it's like vertically will help prevent the gap. So right now I got a 3 eighths of an inch elastic and I measured my back, like the top part where the, dress, the back of the dress is going to fit. And I'm just now, well this dress is actually too big for me. So we, I fit, fit this all later. But I marked the center of the elastic and the center of the dress and I pinned them as you can see and now we're going to move back on to the front of the dress. Um, right here you can see me folding under the excess neckline and then just snipping along the armhole where it puckered. And you're going to see it's still going to pucker so I'm going to snip some more. So I'm going to zoom in very shortly so you can see the little pucker, on, right? You can see it's like puckering there a little bit. So I snip some more to prevent the puckering and then I'm going to get the armhole, fold it under 3 eighths of an inch and then do the same thing for the neckline and yeah, okay. When we go to sew bleh, when we go to sew this little corner right here, we're gonna have to sew as close to the edge as possible because of course there's not much fabric there tucked under. So we're gonna sew it three eighths of an inch until we get to the corner and we're gonna just like gradually ease in till it's like almost non-existent, okay? So right here I'm sewing as close as possible to the corner and then I'm going to pivot the dress and I'm going to follow the original stitching on the ribbed neck part of the t-shirt and then we're going to just continue like that and then do the same thing for the other side. So working with the back of the dress on the round side where we pinned the elastic, we're going to do a zigzag stitch all the way to the other end and we're going to stretch the elastic while we're doing this. We're just going to do it all the way to the end. Then we're going to turn it to the right side, fold this part under and then we're going to use like sort of like a basin stitch and then we're going to stretch while we're doing this stitch and it's going to be 3 eighths of an inch or a little shorter so it catches the elastic. It's going to be less than 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge.
after trimming off the excess neckline, we're going to add the front to the back with the right sides facing. We're going to pin the side seams and stitch them. And after you do that, you can try it on to make sure it fits. And if not, you can just do any necessary adjustments. And I saw that I was going to say something else there, but I didn't. So let's just say any necessary adjustments. Now working with the neckline, we are going to fold it under, as you can see, so fold it to the wrong side, pin, and then we're just going to do a top stitch going down. This is how it looks, I just did two, and now I'm going to use this hook and eye jig. And the big one I put on the wrong side of one side and the long one I put on the right side of the other side. And then we are done!